Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. Today, this message is titled, Stop Worrying About Your Family. Stop worrying about your family. And some of you all, you spend too much time doing that. That is why you are not getting the things of the Lord accomplished. Okay. The Lord spoke to me and he said that there are some who claim to be peacemakers when in all actuality, they are worry warts. They are worry warts. And you know what a wart looks like. It's not cute. It's not nice. It's ugly. And these folks... They have their faces turned up. Their conversation is negative. They are demanding critical people. They don't even have their own house in order, but yet they want to be peacemakers. And I haven't spoken to anyone like this because the Lord had told me to lay low. So this message is as pure as it can get. Because there is no reason There is no reason to talk with anyone at this moment because God is doing a number of things, a number of things in my life. And I have to be about his business because as some will say, you never know when you might be called home. And one thing about it, my riches are not in this world, but my riches are on the other side. The Lord spoke to me. So I cannot be concerned about worrying over people. And places and things. And Jesus, the best example of them all, was not worried about what his mother and father felt when he was spending so much time in the temple. He wasn't concerned about what his relatives thought when he was out there with hardly anything but recruiting some, t- recruiting some disciples, having One of them hold his money or the group's money, if you will. There was no time. There was no time. Some of you all, you got to catch hold of it. There was no time back then for Jesus to be playing these silly little games that the devil likes to put in front of us. And there is no plan any games even now. Oh, the devil, you think he's not going to play a game or two? Absolutely. He's going to remind you of your past. He's going to remind you of all of your former associations and so forth. He's going to tell you how bad you are. Um, He's going to tell you that you need to do this, that, and the other. He's going to have a word for you, and it's not going to be the kind of word that's going to encourage you. If anything, it's going to be the kind of word that's going to keep you bound. It's going to be the kind of word that's going to send you back to people, places, and things that you're not even supposed to be connected to as God ushers you into the future. You see. See, some folks, they tend to look at some of us who are about God's business and they see a flesh. They see a fleshly uh, uh, appearance, if you will. They see a youthful appearance, but they don't know about the mature level of spirituality that some of us have. And so they think that everything you do because you look a certain way is immature, is not right. You still got some growing up to do and whatever else. But meanwhile, Lord Jesus, meanwhile, they don't know that God is moving you to do certain things because God is about kingdom business and therefore he recruits. Some of us who have been there, done it, seen a movie and is still doing it to share a message with those who have fallen by the wayside. Those that are nothing more than enablers and flying monkeys. Those that are more interested in feeling good. Those that are worry warts, Lord Jesus. Worried about what happened back in the day. Still worrying about that. Okay. Oh, well, you know, back in the day, such and such happened. And so I don't know, you know, I remember when I went through such and such uh, taking their situations, their personal experiences and saying, well, you know, this is what you ought to do. This is what you should do. You're not freeing anyone, though. You know, you're not uh, encouraging them to come up higher. Instead, you are trying to keep people at a level that's usually with some of these worry warts that pretend to be peacemakers that is beneath, beneath, uh, of them. 
You see, they don't want you to be equal. They don't want you to be above. They want you to be below. It's like the father who looks down on his son. You may be 20, 40, 50 years old, but I'm still your daddy. And I know, um, excuse me, but dad, <laughs> you're older now. And dad, you tend to forget a lot of things. And dad, I mean, let's just be honest. You're not as sharp as you used to be. So there are some things that you don't know, Dad. Oh, oh, some people start losing it. Well, when you see that, you know that that person has a personality disorder. Because you should not be going off the deep end because your son told you, listen, listen, uh, you don't know everything, Dad. Oh, you're being disrespectful. But you don't. You don't. So let me give you some insight. Because, you know, God is with me just like he's with you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. You see, some parents got to humble themselves. Some parents got to get their houses in order. Some parents got to sit down and talk with some children before they go out here in the world and start telling other people what they should be doing. You see, you see, uh, there's fathers who don't have good relationships with their children. There's fathers who have been doing a number of things that are ungodly and unrighteous. And when I had been moved by the spirit of the Lord to write, say goodbye to dad, some folks thought, oh, Lord, is she talking about her dad? Excuse me, but there's a whole lot of dads in that book. And a lot of those dads. Are some dads that God never wanted y'all to meet. That's why they weren't in your life, Lord Jesus. Oh, you weren't ready for that. That's why you shouldn't be worried about family because you never know how God's going to move people out of your life. You don't know how God's going to set it up so that they never show up in your life. And now you're better, you're wiser, you're stronger than your daddy. Oh, but we're not going to leave out mothers because a lot of us, I know I've done this over the years, worried about mothers and grandmothers and mother-in-laws and then having a stepmother. Okay. Okay. And I will tell you that when you are in a place in your life, Lord Jesus, where that's all you do is worry. God is speaking, but you can't hear him. God is near, but you can't feel him. God is ordering your steps, but you're not walking. Go over here. I don't feel like doing it today. Why? Because I'm just so worried. I'm so worried about what's going to happen. Well, maybe you don't need to worry about that sort of thing. Maybe instead you need to sit still and allow God to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding if you call yourself a believer. Right? The world says worry. The world says stress. The world says you got to call this one up. The world says you got to go over here. The world says that that's your mother. The world says that's your daddy. Jesus said, <laughs> those who believe, those are my mother and my father. Just summarizing. But you can see from Jesus' ministry that he was not worried about his parents. He wasn't worried about his grandparents. He wasn't worried about even some of his uh, naysayers and so forth. Because if he was worried, he would have stopped talking. If he was worried, he would have stopped recruiting folk. If he was worried, there would have been no crucifixion. And if he was worried, there would have been no resurrection. And if he was worried, we would not have been saved. And worry has put a block on some of you all doing what you were supposed to be doing. And you have experienced this in minute forms. 
when you got so worried about something going on at home that you didn't focus on your work, which eventually affects your income if it keeps happening. Worry will stop God from moving. Somebody needs to listen to that. Hear it again. Worry will stop God from moving. You got all these people out here that's praying for you. For whatever your situation might be. And then you turn around and you worry. No wonder you don't see a move of God. No wonder you don't feel at peace. No wonder you keep thinking about this, that, and the other. And then... And then some folks worry because they know they're not right. You see, because if I'm right, I have nothing to worry about. You see, I'm not concerned about every little thing that goes on with folk. But if I'm, but if I'm, you know, in the wrong and I got issues and they keep piling up and so forth, then yeah, then yeah, I'm going to worry I'm not going to go to God like I'm supposed to. Worry. Worry and worry some more. Some of you all, you worry too much. The Lord told me in the spirit, you worry way too much. And let's, and let's just say the worst might happen, whatever it is that you're worried about. Let's just say that somebody does die because it seems like a lot of folks worry about that. Well, I got to do this because what if somebody that, okay? Let me tell you something that I have found out having lost my grandmother. <laughs> when I first heard in the spirit that God was going to take her was five years, five years prior to her death. And I said to myself, I said, okay, Lord, well, why would I need to know this information right now? It just seems so bizarre to me. But I understand why God tells some people things and not other people. Because God knew that there was a book that I was supposed to put together. And it's not always easy to do a family book. So I needed some time. And it's not always easy to interview people because sometimes they're very open and they want to talk to you. And tell you everything. And other times they're, they don't want to tell you anything and then sometimes they say oh you know what let's just abandon this project I don't really want to do this okay but the motivation the motivation was already put in me during that time when he gave me that message and I didn't know of course the day or the hour or anything because like I said it was five years prior but I tell you that when you have a sense that something's not quite right or something might go down even. You're going to do certain things to get the job done, whatever it is that God wants you to do. But if you're not in tune to what God is telling you, then you are going to stress and you are going to worry. When God says, I have your child, why are you still crying? Why are you still upset? When God says, I have your relatives in my hand. Why are you still running around here talking to all of these negative people who all they do is keep you stressed and worried anyway because they got their share of issues that they're going to dump on you. Well, I remember when me and my mom went through something like that and I remember when my daddy and da 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 da, da and so then you get yourself all worked up and you're crazed and everything else over other people's experiences that have nothing to do with you. And so part of walking with the Lord is is that we do empathize with what other people are going through, but we do not internalize those things. Because if I was to internalize every little itty bitty thing that people told me and what they were contemplating, because Lord knows not that long ago, one of my sons told me about a little girl who, you know, was thinking about committing suicide and put her picture up on the um, on, on one of his on one of his sites where she had cut her arm and stuff. And then somebody else came along and said, okay, bullies, talking about some of the folks that were bullies out there, you got what you wanted. And so the girl passed away. But worry wasn't going to do anything for our family. 
And so I sat down and I talked with my son and I gave him a brochure on suicide and I told him what to do if he ever comes across anybody else like that in his network. And that wasn't family. Okay. But the point is, is that you all have to understand that all of this business of thinking that you're doing the right thing by trying to put other people's drama on other folks is only going to cause you to be in trouble with the Lord. Because see, sometimes the enemy is using folks to try to keep other people down. And meanwhile, you're thinking that you're going to be the peacemaker in a situation when in fact, as God told me, there are worry warts and those worry warts, they like to spread. They like to spread gossip. They like to spread lies. They like to spread rumors and everything else. Let's go to the scriptures because some people are like, okay, thank you for the commentary. Thank you for a little bit of the emotion and so forth. But what does the Bible say? I'm glad you asked. First Peter chapter five, verse seven says, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. That's what you're supposed to do. But are you doing it? Doesn't say anything about titles. Okay. John chapter 14, verse one, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Are you really a believer? Question yourself on that one. Are you really a believer? Because your heart's troubled. And it's troubled and it's troubled some more. And eventually when hearts trouble too much, it doesn't have anything to do with what you're worried about or who you're worried about. That's all on you. And the world keeps moving. The world keeps moving. Oh, well, you know, I'm concerned because, well, you know, my family's going through so much. And if that lone wolf out there, that that one that's always giving us trouble, if they would just call or come around or do something, then maybe the family wouldn't. That's your issue. <laughs> that's your issue. Life goes on. Most likely that lone wolf. Or that person that's out there, here, there, and everywhere, they ain't thinking too much about you. They're just not. Especially when they're about God's business. People too busy. The only advice that I give to folks who kind of lose it about things like that is I say, you need to get busy. <laughs> you need to get busy. You got too, too, many, too much free time or something that you're meddling around in everybody else's affairs. You need to get busy. Find yourself a hobby. Do those things that you always wanted to do before you die. That's the best advice I could give some folks. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 says, Be careful. What? Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which path, passes path passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So you have laid all of your requests before the Lord and you say, well, Lord, I want this to happen. I want that to happen and all of this other stuff. But have you confessed sin? Really? Have you? You see, sometimes people will go out here and they'll tell folks one story, but then they won't say everything that they did. Nope, they won't say that. They'll just say, this is what I need for you to pray about. This is what I need for you to do. Now, a person who's spiritually gifted, one who's discerning, will be able to see, oh, I see what's going on with this individual right here. They're just trying to manipulate the people of God to get their selfish desires met. Mm. So now suddenly you become so spiritual and so about God's business because you want something to happen. You got to watch. You got to watch for some folks out there that look at God as a genie and they will use those individuals who have callings on their lives, who are spiritually anointed to get their selfish desires met. You got to be able to discern. You got to be able to discern. And some folks are too busy, once again, worried about things that they don't see when a wolf in sheep's clothing is coming to them and setting them up to be cursed. Because this goes even deeper than just, I'm trying to help folk out. Or I'm just worried. No, 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 no. You could be walking into a curse. And so 
when they all, when one falls, they all going to fall down like dominoes. You see, because you don't know if you're too busy worried, you can't see the elephant in the room. When you're too busy worried, you don't recognize when you're being recruited to do other people's dirty work. The Lord said, you better wake up, wake up, brother in Christ, wake up, sister in Christ. Up there entertaining folks. Yeah, girl, let me tell you what so-and-so did. Oh, and let me tell you another thing about this one and that one. And communicating information that you pick up here, there, and everywhere to these individuals. Meanwhile, you don't even know that you're being recruited. You're being set up. You're about to enter into a curse. Because, see, God's not happy with everyone. And not everybody is together spiritually mentally physically we yes of course we all got our issues but some got more issues than others and some are further away from god than others and some have been doing a lot of dirt and pretending like they're clean you gotta know you gotta know the history i'm hearing that in the atmosphere know the history know the history before you presume something go back down memory lane Pay attention to the patterns. Why are things the way they are? Lord Jesus, can you give me some insight as to why all of this went down like this? Other than what I think or other than what this person has told me. You see, and all of this stuff comes out of worry. Colossians chapter three, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Peace, peace, where rule in your hearts. Is your heart guarded? Your heart's not guarded if you're empathizing with folks and then you don't know the history. And you don't know why they're doing what they're doing. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Ye are called in one body. Together and be ye thankful. This doesn't apply to unsaved backsliding folks. Okay. People want to always put everybody in one category. Oh, you look a certain way. They put you in a category. You're a certain age. They put you in a category. But then when it comes to what people want, they want to lump everybody into one big old category. You see, not everybody belongs in the same category, especially when they are not saved. This is about God's people, saints, God's people. The unsaved can benefit if they confess sin, if they repent, if they accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and allow that Holy Ghost to come in and deliver them. But otherwise, let's not try to apply holy text onto sinful living, onto manipulative people, onto people who God has set aside, set apart. See, people tend to think those that are in the church think that the set aside, set apart is just something that tends to happen with those within the church setting. Let me tell you, there are people in the family right now who are set aside, set apart. And sometimes it's because they did it. And sometimes it's because God did it. And when God is setting his people aside and apart, and when the enemy is setting his people aside and apart, you don't want to be caught up in it. There's a scripture in the Bible in Proverbs that says that we are not to get involved in another man's quarrel. So worry warts, AKA, I think I'm a peacemaker. Don't be getting involved with other people's dramas on your worries. Or a nicer way of putting it, your concerns. Oh, well, I'm just concerned. No, you're worried. <laughs> you're worried. If you're going to worry or you're going to be fearful or anything else, be concerned about the God who created you. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace in perfect peace in perfect peace whose mind whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee do you trust in the lord today do you really trust in him or are you still 
thinking about everybody else and everything else. So no wonder you're going to continue to be on that worry wart train then. Your mind will be in perfect peace if you will stay on thee and stop worrying about family. If you would just trust in Jesus and stop worrying about family. There are family members under a curse. Another reminder for some of you all that missed it. Psalm 4 verse 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou Lord only makest me dwell in safety. And this is particularly important for those of you all who are in relationships. Because sometimes you're so concerned about what your partner said and what they did and everything else that you don't get rest at night. And some of you all don't feel safe in these relationships. Drinking, cussing, fighting, craziness. You don't know when the shoes want to drop. You're walking on eggshells. But yet you worrying about other people. Be concerned about what's happening in your household. Watch your back. Sometimes folks get older and they get crazier. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. And he's telling me, he said, tell the people that they need to pray before they go to bed each night. Make the time to pray. Make the time to sit still. Don't just get right, right in the bed. Make the time to sit still before you get in your bed. And say your prayers. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He's going to do what? He's going to supply all your need. Not your want. Well I want our family to be together. And I want us to go places. And I want a lot of things. And I just don't understand why God doesn't give them to me. Because they're not needs. He knows what you need. But my God shall supply all your need according to, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not man's wealth, not man's title, not man's opportunities and things like that. Because some of you all, you claim to be peacemakers when you're really worried words. And you're really thinking about yourself in the process. What can I get? What can I get? If I do this for this person, I just might get blessed because, well, these folks got some money. Oh, if I do this, maybe I'll have a certain position. If I, if I, you know, say this and say that, better watch it. Doing the dirty work for the wrong folks. Romans 8, 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritually minded, not carnal, not worldly. Always wanting to appease your flesh. But I want this to happen. I need this to happen. Please, please, Jesus. And that is why things do not work out for some of you all. Not all, but for some of you all. Because those that is not happening to. Okay. Sooner or later, something's going to go down. Because they're so carnally minded. It's always about, you know, the, the material all the time. That's a nice car, man. That's a nice house. Yeah, those clothes. What's up? Ooh, that hair. And I mean, you always on that trip. Carnally minded is death. So yes, death is coming and it's not going to be because so-and-so don't call and so-and-so don't come around. No, death is coming. It's coming for some people a lot faster than others because they're so carnally minded. That's why. And you want to blame other people? You want to say, well, if this one would do this, that, and the other? Come on now. No, folks bring on their own destruction. The opportunities were there for them to get their acts together. God done marked some folks. It's a wrap. It's over. They're walking dead. I done already cried over some folks already. I done already attended a funeral not that long ago. Okay? It's over. Finished. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 24, when thou liest down, and I'm going to leave you with this, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Some of you all worry, worry. That's why I talk to her because you, well, you know how she is. 
Well, that's why I go over his house because, you know, I don't want him saying nothing. Well, you know, I mean, mom and dad, they be going off, you know, so I, I just got to make sure, you know, they see me because I can't be letting it go. Come on, please. Fear, fear, fear. And then when they hurt you, when they do something that makes you mad, when you are all upset about one thing or another. And meanwhile, God said, I didn't tell you to go over there. I didn't tell you to talk to this one. I didn't tell you to do anything. Okay. But hey, you want to be carnally minded? You want to be foolish? You want to step out of the will of the Lord? Well, you reap what you sow. You get what you deserve, so to speak. Proverbs three twenty four. once again, when thou liest down, thou shall not be afraid. Don't be scared. Yea, thou shalt die, or thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Thou shalt lie down. Okay, picture yourself lying down. Okay, that's sleep. Picture yourself sleeping. And picture yourself having sweet dreams. Don't be caught up with this family stuff. I'm telling you. Been there, done it, already wrote the books. Seen all that I could see. Felt all that I could feel. Know who the traitors are, who the crazy ones are, who the ridiculous ones are, who are marked. Why am I going to get myself caught up under a curse? Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for taking this time out to listen, as always, to God be the glory.